Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie. This is the week 19, May the 3rd through the 9th weekly wrap up. Yay! I didn't. Alrighty, so being that I am quarantining, lifestyle is pretty chill. It's pretty chill. And it was suggested that I give sort of my TV updates because that's what I do. I either read or I watch TV. And being that all three of us, my whole entire family, is at home right now uh, because we're still quarantining. Yay! And I'm no longer working. Yay! Um... I've got a lot of reading done, so I will make this lifestyle portion of it super quick um, so that I can get to those 10 books that I read last week. So I have been watching The Beauty and The Baker. I don't know if you guys are watching it, but I'm finding it really cute and I'm finding it really, really enjoyable and I'm liking the uh, series. Yes, I am. Um, I think it's a cute little take and I like the 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 yummy I just like it I like it oh so much and I think you guys should go check this out um of course we're watching The Voice which is live from home kind of like American Idol but I don't like American Idol because it's it's mostly popularity on American Idol whereas The Voice is all about The Voice yeah um my voice isn't all that great uh but yes so now I don't know if you guys have been seeing but the ad for Upload over on Amazon Prime, oh my goodness, my son got me to end up watching this show. Now, mind you, he's 12 years old, and there were a couple parts where we were like, oh, cover your eyes, um, turn your head, you know, ooh, that's inappropriate for you to be watching. But overall, the show was absolutely freaking amazing. I'm so mad that we're going to have to wait like a year and a half to two years before we get season two, because that ending episode was fantastic fantastic and so good oh my goodness I mean we were think we went into it thinking oh it's gonna be somewhat like the good place um with a little more edge because it's on Amazon Prime and stuff like that and oh oh my goodness no it's more like my husband's fave of Black Mirror uh over on Netflix and just as twisted and crazy and it's now more about the murder mystery that's going on with it uh, than it is the whole afterlife of it all. So, if you haven't checked out this show yet, you need to get it, because I know y'all got Amazon Prime. Don't even, you know, front on it. Amazon Prime is where it's at, and you can get it through there. So go check that out. And then the last thing that I'm going to talk about that we watched as a family is Stuber. Um, this is Batista and uh, yeah, he's in a funny role. I found it to be uh, interestingly funny and uh, entertaining. We watched it last night. I was like, oh, I don't know that I'm going to enjoy this movie. It's Batista. I don't, I'm, I'm still not buying into his acting chops from being a wrestler. Um, but he really did a good job and I really, really enjoyed it. I'm not a fan of the driver, um, of the, uh, driver, the Uber driver's comedic style. I'm not a fan of his. He, it's kind of dry and, uh, doesn't work for me, but overall him and Batista's Comedic style together, it worked, and I found it to be pretty entertaining. Yes. Alrighty, so let's get into the books that I read last week. Ten of them bad boys, and I started the week uh, concluding out uh, the Light vs. Dark readathon. If you guys didn't participate in that, uh, please feel free to go back and watch our videos. A lot of us did vlogs for the weekend. We did a live show for it. I will try and link some things in the cards and things like that so you can go back and check it out. I released my vlog uh, just this past week so you can check out what I did. I actually had a little more fun I wouldn't say not than anybody else, but I had um, 
I had some other things going on last weekend as well as reading all the books. So I finished Becoming His by Mariah Dietz and I placed this in New Adult. Um, I didn't actually read this one or add this one as a light versus dark readathon. Um, whatchamacallit? Prompt. There we go. Gosh, couldn't get that out. But I give it 3.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an audiobook. Um, this was part of a special project that I was doing. And this book follows Ace or Harper and Max. They are next door neighbors. They've had crushes on each other for a long time. It's super angsty. Um, but at the same time, I kind of don't remember it. Ooh, sorry. Um, there's a whole lot of insecurity running through this book and I wasn't here for it. Then there was a bit of a cliffhanger at the end of it and I'm just like, how? Okay. And then I kind of looked ahead, which is something I normally don't do, um, and found out that the next book in the series is just his perspective of all the things that just happened. And I'm just like, do I really want to know what he's going through at the same time? I kind of do because I felt like that was missing in this book. Um, you know, having his perspective and she just came off really whiny and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I might give it a chance because I like Mariah Dietz's writing. Although it can become sometimes lowering and too much. But, yeah. The next book that I finish, which I actually finished on Saturday night. No, I finished it Sunday. What am I talking about? Sunday, Sunday, because the readathon went till Sunday. Ugh. I finished One Moment Please by Amy Dawes. This is in her Wait For Me standalone series. Um, I place this in rom-com. I give it five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listened to this as an audiobook along with reading along with it. And I used it for the light versus dark readathon for blue and black on the cover for rom-com. A sneak read for the light side because um, I was a dark side leader. Uh, and yeah, I loved this book. Um, so Lindsay and Josh meet one night at a club. They don't like each other. They have some, you know, banter that goes along with it. So it's almost hate to love. But then they have one night stand and the sexy times are good. Oh, the sexy times are good. But Lindsay ends up getting pregnant. And when she ends up getting injured. Well, not really injured. She has an allergic reaction and has to go to the hospital. Who becomes her doctor but Dr. Dick? And no, I totally got that got that that whole premise wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, they do have a one. They have a one night stand, but that's not how they met. They, they met over the fact that Lindsay was writing a paper in the hospital, but they did end up meeting at the club later. So, sorry about that. I read a lot of books this week. But anyways, they end up getting together. And he ends up becoming this just, just squishy, squishy doctor that just wanted to, just wanted to love on and, you know, be with. And their antics back and forth were amazing, uh, were super sweet and funny but at the same time, you were like, oh, so angsty and, you know, just emotion driven and stuff like that. He has some things that are in his past and some traumas and, you know, some issues, commitment issues and things like that. And I was just like, oh, yes, I was here for it. I was here for the whole story. I loved it. Read it in like one sitting and it was amazing. Amazing. The next girl, the next book that I finished was Girl Gone Viral by Alicia Rye. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I want to place this. I think I'm just going to put it in contemporary. I give it four, fa four stars, four stars, three Steam fans. I read it as an arc and uh, it was better than the right swipe. I will say that. Um, but at the same time, you have Katrina who is sort of a shut in. She has some PTSD things going on in her life. She doesn't like to go out. So she's been doing therapy at this coffee shop. But then some random stranger ends up sitting with her and kind of sets her up and has her picture taken and then 
goes and runs with the story and she's now thrust back into the spotlight again and it's somewhere that she doesn't want to be. Uh, Joss is her um, bodyguard and has been her bodyguard for a long time. He has a crush on her. She has a crush on him. Their angst back and forth between their crushes was a little frustrating. Was really frustrating, actually. It was very frustrating. Uh, but at the same time, he's also dealing with some PTSD issues as well uh, from his time in the military. So the two of them are, you know, sort of working through their issues together but separate. Uh, and he ends up taking her to his family farm where he has family issues that are going on as well so there's that whole dynamic all i can say is that i enjoyed this one much more than the other one and um it still frustrated me still frustrated me there was a lot of social issues that were in this one but they held from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which i was grateful for because um in the other book uh, it just seemed like they were just tossed in at the end to add social issues to sort of check the box type thing. But this one, it flowed all the way through. You knew what the social issues were. You knew what they were trying to combat. You knew what they were trying to get over. And it finished out and stuff like that. So I had to give it a couple more stars because, yeah. Yeah. So the next book that I finished was Caught Inside by Christy Lee. I placed this in New Adult. And I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read this as an ARC. It is now available for you guys to, to read. Um, and this is a story of two people, one that lives in California, one that is visiting California from Canada, and they have one week together. They get to sort of live a life together. Both of them have somewhat of commitment issues or... Um, you know, they, they, they feel the zing. They feel the zing within their week, but at the same time, they're like, we only have a week, so we're going to make this week and make it memorable. Well, one of them ends up coming back, and, well, the guy from Canada, Canada, that was his nickname in the, in the, in the book, was Canada, so... He comes from Canada, starts to live in California, and they start to sort of figure out, do we just leave that week in the past, or do we go ahead and still have those feelings and things like that? I loved it. It was sweet. It was fun. It was sexy, and it was just, it was a good little, good little yummy yummy. Yeah, yes, very much so. Sorry, my quarantine hair is itching me. The next book that I finished was The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren, and I place this in New Adult. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read this as an ARC, and this book follows Corey and James. They are assistants to two reality TV show stars, and these TV show stars are married, but they act badly. So when they get, the TV show stars get, uh, short sort of hit up to go on this book tour because they're getting ready to you know pop off their new season their new show and a book about marriage even though they have problems in their own marriage um Corey and Carrie I'm sorry not Corey Carrie and James are their assistants so now they have to go on this road trip with this married couple and sort of keep their fighting out of the public eye um it was a little off-putting in the beginning of the book because there are some interviews that end up happening and you're just like what how what what are these interviews for i don't understand what's going on but as the story starts to evolve and starts to unfold you find out what those interviews were for and then everything starts to come in to you know aha uh -huh. oh that oh okay i see where that came from now and i really enjoyed the banter between carrie and james um i did sort of feel for them um you could see the you know difference between the way james was treated the difference between carrie was treated um because carrie had some you know Carrie had been with the couple for like 10 years, whereas James was just coming in. And um, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So there's that. 
The next book that I finished was Love Divide, which is Battlefield of Love number two by Carrie Hart. And I placed this in Contemporary. This I give four stars to. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an ebook. This book follows Nikki and Gavin. So it's sort of set up as somewhat of a love triangle. There is another individual that is involved in it. Nikki and Gavin are best friends. They work at the same club. Um, he's the club owner, so there is that workplace sort of dynamic. Or no, he's a manager, not the owner. Because the owner is somebody else. Anyways. They're best friends, so Nikki has to figure out, does she go for the guy that is giving her sparks right at the moment that's new and fresh and, you know, making her excited? Or does she stay with Gavin, who is that ride or die, has been her best friend, the guy that she can cry on the shoulder? Does she open her eyes and allow love to come in and, you know their love, her love is divided and she has to figure out where to go from there. The next book that I finished was Fight For Me, Arrowwood Brother number two by Corinne Michaels. I place this in Contemporary. I give it five stars. I give it 2.5 Steam fans. I read it as an arc and this is a second chance love story with secrets and even though this is a standalone within the series which means you don't have to read the first book in the Arrowwood Brothers series um it is good to do that because you know some of the backstory um of the secrets that are being kept but if you were just to go into this not knowing anything except for the fact that they have family secrets you get to learn those family secrets uh Declan and Sydney were childhood sweethearts. They grew up together. They were going to be together. And then life decided that wasn't going to happen. And then they break apart. They go their separate ways. There's eight years that end up happening between them. And, you know, they're separated for eight years. And then they have to come back uh, together. They try and stay away from each other. However, things end up happening. This story is about family and forgiveness and second chances. And I loved every moment of it. Loved it. Loved it. Oh, so much. Oh, 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 so much. You guys will get to read this come May the 19th. So get it together so that you can pre-order it and, you know, go check this book out. Alrighty, the next book that I finished was Forbidden Protector by London Hale. This is an erotic novella. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it on the podcast of Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. And this is an insta per, uh, possession, instant, you know, lust and just gotta have her. Knox is a bodyguard to some sex workers and uh, a madam he hires she hires him to do the protection for them and Claire wants to lose her virginity but she has overprotective brothers one happens to be a cop which could damage Knox's uh, partner's business and all things are bad but the two of them feel an attraction when she decides to try and hire a uh, sex worker to assist in getting rid of her virginity and he's like <laughs> no no I saw her first I want her and that's how it's gonna be and that's what ends up happening um but I thought that had a little bit of heart to it too as well but it is fire it's it's right off the bat sexy from start to finish it's a good erotic novella and that's all that's to that yes the next book that I finished was Savior by Fiona Cole I place this in dark romance. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it four steam fans. I read this as an audiobook. This is an age gap book. Yes. Yes. Um, it deals with the sex trade and drugs. So Alexandra needs money. She is, you know, of age. She's 19, I believe. But she's just trying to make ends meet. Her sister is a drug addict and she has to deal with the sister and her boyfriend doing drugs in their trailer. And, you know, she's just trying to make her life a little bit better. 
Eric comes in, sees her ad so that she could, you know, make some quick cash and sort of get out of that situation. He comes in, decides that, you know, he's going to take this on himself, even though he's been doing some good on the side and things like that, uh, that deals with the sex trade or sex rings and stuff like that, uh, trying to shut them down. He moves her in to his apartment and they fight their attraction for a long time until they don't anymore. And I was okay with that. I was like, this is, you know, it, it evolves. It's, it's a bit of a slow burn. It's so it's not, I think it's more of a medium burn because it's not so slow that it's not until the end of the book that they end up hooking up. It's slow to the point where you get to the point where you're like, okay, they're going to do, oh, yep, they did it. And then they do it. So yes, I was here for that. And I enjoyed the backstory of Eric and why he was doing it and why he was doing the things that he was doing, why he was kind of holding her off and, you know, things like that. Then the final book that I finished reading was Another by Fiona Cole. Uh, I placed this one in Contemporary and I give it 4.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. Fire from start to finish. Uh, this is a secret baby uh, story. I don't place it in the dark romances. This is part of the Voyeur series. Um, as you could probably tell, the covers are similar. Uh, this one follows a character that we met in book number two and called Lovers. And this is Karina. Karina, the only reason I didn't give it a full five stars is because throughout this story, Karina really kind of kept going back to some of the things that happened in Lovers. And it kind of got a little bit of annoying. I did appreciate that she moved on, uh, which is how she meets Ian. Uh, Ian ends up getting a boudoir session from for Christmas, and so does Karina from her aunt. And then they have a one night stand where Karina ends up getting pregnant and she's not able to find Ian. Ian hasn't been able to find her. They only exchange first names. Um, and then they can't find the photographer that took their pictures. So they have been sort of dreaming about each other, but not having a way to connect. And then when they finally do connect, you get to see how they end up uh, sort of walking through their their new dynamic and everything like that. I really enjoyed it oh so much. I loved that Ian had, you know, his family issues and the things that he wanted out of life. I appreciated the fact that Karina was willing to allow things to evolve with Ian. Um, but that small little smidgen of uh, frustration came when Karina kept going back to the things that happened in her past life that kind of propelled her to where she was, but at the same time, not. Uh, but I really enjoy the story overall. Okie dokie, on to the books that I am currently reading. I am currently reading The Modern Gentleman by Megan Quinn. This is a surprise release from Megan, and I am super excited to read this one. Um, I am also going to be reading... Winter's Arrow by Lexi C. Foss. This is the next book in the Sinister Fairy Tale collection and based upon this cover as well as... I can't read the tagline, sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, I think. Maybe. There's a wolf on it. Winter's, Winter's, Ar Winter's Arrow. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe. Little Red Riding Hood? I don't know. We'll find out. You'll find out next week because uh, this has to be done. This gets released this week so you guys can go check it out uh, as well. Keep an eye out on my Instagram. I may post something there. Uh, I like to do that sort of mini review over in my stories so that you can check them out after I finish reading them. My immediate thoughts on them. Um, and let's see. What else? Am I reading anything else? Am I reading anything else? I don't know. I'm sure I'll be reading something else. 
but at this moment I don't have anything on my slate I have lots of books on my whatchamacallit oh there is another Fiona Cole book uh, called Surrender that I might check out uh, this is a new release uh, that released just recently. So uh, if the audiobook is out, I might try and check that one out. Or I might just try and read it because I do have it. I own it because this series is amazing. So there's that. Alrighty, I didn't say it in the beginning of the video, but happy Mother's Day to all those mothers of any nature. Um, sometimes it's hard for people to hear that. Sometimes it's cool because, you know, mothers are mothers. We all have our special jobs. It is our day. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Uh, another huge thank you to all of you supporters out there. I greatly appreciate you. Um, you guys are amazing. And I think that's it. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there's a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. There is a recommendation form down there. I may be doing something with that soon. Uh, so leave me the book title, the book's author's name, and the genre in which you think it fits into, as well as your name so that if I read your book that you have recommended, I can shout you out in the video that I talk about it. So I think that's it. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, and I will see you in the next video.